please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking, going through a bit of a rabbit hole dive I guess, through video shared, clown world, libs of TikTok, things I find amusing that all seem to kind of tangibly connect together. We'll start with the video, and I'm not going to provide any context until after the video. This is important. Hi, it's Luna, activist teacher here, and I just got done reading a book about racism. And did you guys know that um, going to the bathroom on the, in a toilet and indoor plumbing is actually from white supremacy and colonialism? So when the white colonists uh, saw the indigenous that they were digging holes and going to the bathroom outside, they said that that was more like animals. And uh, the white colonists decided to have indoor plumbing and toilets to use the bathroom. The video is a parody. I know this because Cali Fontanilla, if I've mispronounced her name, I'm very sorry, has made multiple videos doing this character, calling legal immigrants from the Middle East extremists for thinking there are only two genders. It's additionally a joke and a fairly obvious one at that because it plays on the reductio ad absurdum of, I don't want to say the snowflakery, but it does seem to fall in line with that Oh, rather frustrating area. It's a nice way of setting things up because it's not all a joke, it's not all a parody, but we are going to then go from Callie's tweet to Gina Bontempo, who tweeted, if an alcoholic posted videos of himself drinking excessively every day, people would intervene and the profile would probably be nuked. But this is accepted as cute, entertaining, and even empowering. We're failing an unhealthy population under the guise of compassion. The individual in the video you're now seeing on the screen does this and only this. They just eat food in their TikToks every single day. They go out and get loads of takeaways and just eat. Because they're young, people seem to think this is body positivity. It's not. It's levels of gluttony that are beyond the seven deadly sins. It is a guaranteed way of ensuring your mobility, your health, your future will be compromised from a younger age. And you will have no one to blame but yourself unless you choose to change it. Now, while this one doesn't really fit in with the first parody, and it won't fit in with the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, in fact, videos I want to show you and go through and respond to, I wanted to include it because I'm sick of seeing this video and this particular person on my timeline. If they see this video, I want you to know as endearing as it might seem to be to you, it is not. Whoever enables this crap should be ashamed of themselves, and I mean your mother who drives you around in your TikToks, taking you to fast food joints so you can then sit in your car and do mukbangs. The third video, the fourth video, the fifth video, and the last video concern gender. The last one, something highly inappropriate, but we're gonna go to that later, don't worry. Don't wanna spoil all the fun. The first video, Libs of TikTok, this person uses we us pronouns because we're all inherently connected and she's on a collective level of consciousness. I didn't realize humanity had moved to the level of the Borg. Perhaps season three of Picard was right. All it takes is a little programming and a body that's been dead for years. I have slowly but surely been identifying less and less with she, her, hers, which were my pronouns for years. And for a while I was like, I guess they, them, theirs, whatever worked for me. But I've realized that we're all so inherently connected. This isn't human centipede or human sent iPad. This is not the human caterpillar either if you've seen the third of that particular movie franchise that was quite clearly worthy of an Oscar. No, humans are not inherently connected. I can promise you that unless they're having an orgy. For the sake of it, I identify with the pronouns of nothing. I'm not genderless. No, 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 no. I just don't have pronouns, which means you'll have to use my name. Because why bother with pronouns when a name is much more unique to you? If it gets too complicated and there are too many people with your name, don't worry. I hear the chemical equations haven't been taken yet. Might I suggest you change your name to something you need to use? Aluminium chlorohydrate. If you know what that is, 10 points to your respective Hogwarts house. Cancelled, of course. That what makes me feel most validated is when I and when others use us and ours and we. Us, ours and we are not pronouns. It is considered an object pronoun. 
and is used in object position. Therefore, unless you are identifying as an object which may well slightly contradict the whole being human thing, individual, having rights, you are wrong. Like, I love that for us. Like, instead of I love that for you, like, I love that for us. You're not in a relationship with everyone. And I promise you, people choose the whole gender pronoun thing not because they want a collective aspect. No, they do it because they want to appear very individual. It's why so many make it so difficult to understand who they are, where they themselves cannot fathom who they are. Why? Because they have pronouns for their friends, pronouns for their family, and pronouns for the oikari, the NPCs of the world. And things like that, you know what I mean? No, but I do get the impression you're going to lead this to something that might make you seem a bit crazier than you already are. It makes me feel really happy, and as often as I can, I strive to use collective pronouns. It makes it seem like you just desperately want to speak in a very similar manner to third person all the time. It is not a pronoun for we, us, and ours. I promise you that. It is what you use when you have a partner next to you and you two are talking about things together. I notice your space looks oddly empty. Hmm. When referring to one person, if you didn't feel comfortable calling them we or us because whatever you were saying specifically did not include you, you would likely use they, them, unless you had some other pronoun that you felt called to use. I was starting to wonder when you'd make this more complicated, by pulling out of your own asshole something that would be very unlikely to happen, but because of the nature of what you are trying to espouse, it's possible. I personally um, utilize she, they, we, us. Um, I feel very val val validated when utilizing collective pronouns. Don't try and give these <coughs> pronouns that you identify with uh, another title to make this even more messy. You and I both know this is just more attention seeking and of course, how high are you to think of this, really? But I also recognize that they won't work for everyone because not everyone is on that collective level of consciousness yet. Um, so. Saying things like that lends higher credence to my belief that you don't have any friends. In the time being, whatever pronouns call to you to use with me specifically, um, I, I accept all of them. Are you sure you want to commit to that? I'll tell you what. To my dear darling, lovely, super duper friendly audience, do not first of all go and harass this person, but in the comments of this video, my one that is, tell me what pronouns you would like to use for this individual. I can't use the pronouns that were um, alluded to earlier because the majority of them do not actually fit within the sentences I'm using. Hence, there is another issue here where I have to make more of a concerted effort to try and frame my sentences differently or just do what I've been doing already and be a bit more aloof on it because you dug this hole and I'm having to point and poke at the holes you've created. The second video, females who think they are males are getting gender affirming piercings on their genitals to simulate balls. Oh boy. Totally, yeah. Uh, technically a gender affirming piercing can be any piercing that you get that affirms your gender. Think of, you know, earlobe piercings for women. You know guys have piercings too, right? I don't just mean through their cock, I mean like ear piercings. Even I've got one. If it is to affirm your gender, surely if you want to get ear piercings, they can just be of your gender sign. And you can get more creative if you like with all those individual genders that require signs as well. Might I recommend you just replace it with what you think your sign is, instead with a Tangela Pokemon. But when a lot of people say this term, they're referring specifically to piercings that help with bottom dysphoria for trans people. The specific piercings that I got are inner labes. A lot of transmasculine people will get these piercings and get them done at a large gauge and wear big heavy jewelry in it and it can emulate balls. You know, instead of wearing a piercing that pulls things down to sort of simulate a gravity, you know, you could instead just wear a prosthetic, right? Perhaps just put a sock in a pair of wife fronts to simulate a, the Bowie bulge. If you know what that is, good on you. Going this extra mile to get these large piercings and put weights on it Reminds me of a BuzzFeed video where women were strengthening their uh, genitals down there by putting a stone up there, yeah, and attached to it was a string with weights on it. 
I'm not playing that video, but I have done a response video with Anna Mae Renee on this channel covering that and mocking it to high hell. And when you're wearing this type of jewelry and these piercings, it can affect the way that you have to sit and stand and walk in a way that makes your body language appear more masculine. Rather than forcing yourself to be something you're not, why not instead just be you? Because many guys can cross their legs. Many sit with their legs closer together. Many walk with their legs closer together as well. You don't need to go to the reductio ad absurdum levels. You're only going to end up hurting yourself and your genitals, which apparently need to be a second entity entirely. A lot of people also just find it really affirming to have that physical weight there. Do you think that's how men feel though, when they, you know, have their balls there? Yeah? Do you think that's what we think? Ah, there's a weight. I feel safe. I don't worry that because my genitals on the outside, a light tap will put me out of action for a whole month. No, 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 no. Having them there makes me feel like a man. <laughs> the third video. The US Embassy in Brazil put out a video about pronoun usage, including A, M, per, pers, and Z, here pronouns. You've probably noticed that more and more people are stating their preferred pronouns when they introduce themselves in social conversations, in classrooms, in the workplace, in their email signatures, and on social media. Nope. When you say more and more, that is not an indicator of a vast majority, only that the levels of indoctrination has increased. Why one has to introduce yourself by name and then pronouns still baffles me because your pronouns are not going to come up in conversation with that person, unless you are talking about that person. Creating this extra little loophole to start a conversation is redundant. You're better off saying, hi, my name is, well, for you, I think it was, I don't know, Nob? Yeah? Isn't the weather lovely today? That's where you go next. Yeah? How are you, perhaps, if you're uh, feeling friendly? The reason is simple. There is a range of gender identities beyond male and female. Yes, and people using them have done a remarkable job of making it even more complicated. So much so that it confuses the young people who are trying desperately not to offend everyone. In English, many use he, him, or she, her pronouns, but a growing number of people are using different pronouns like they, them, ze, them, ze, here, her, hers, and am. These are called gender neutral pronouns. I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. While I don't identify with genderless, I refuse to identify with any of this crap. Therefore, my pronoun is non-existent, and you must instead always address me by my name. My name is hardly uh, unique, there's no such thing as one, and earlier I said for the first video, aluminium chlorohydrate for that lady. For you, I'm going to choose something a bit more creative, benzonitate, because talking to you is giving me a sore throat. They don't specify the gender of the subject of the sentence, and they exist because you can't assume someone's gender just by looking at them. Wait, so are you telling me that without engaging in a conversation with somebody, you are assuming gender by using gender-neutral pronouns? Are you telling me you're putting a label on another person without their explicit consent? Talking about them without them, first of all, giving consent to be spoken to about... I will admit there are more points here, but the levels of disrespect are astonishing. <laughs> Words matter, and they are powerful tools to convey meaning and connect more deeply with one another. This subject matter is nowhere near as profound as you're trying to make it sound, and I'm done with your video. So we're going to go to the last one. This one is quite strange, and it's not necessarily a response, it's putting something on blast highlighted in a video. Target has gone completely woke, now they're selling tucking and binding clothing for little kids. This this doesn't feel right. We're at Target right now and there's a lot of controversy going on about all of the pride stuff that's coming out with kids clothes and things like that. So we're going to go to the kids section and we're actually going to see if they're putting weird, creepy, uncomfy stuff on children's clothing. Okay, this is the child section. This is literally the kids section. I'm next to a literal onesie that says whatever the hell that means. We have glad you came out and I'm so happy that you're queer in the kids section. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry, but pride and toddler don't belong in the same sentence. So I found an extra small swimsuit in the child section. It says light binding effect on it. And then the bottoms in the kids section, keep in mind, say tuck friendly construction. Now I, not being a parent, do not know if that is common practice on clothing for children. The pride thing being near kids stuff, I kind of agree with the lady. It doesn't need to be their kids, babies, toddlers, they do not understand any of this. They see a rainbow, they think kids TV show. They don't think sexuality, pride. So why bother putting it there other than to make it seem like the parents are virtue signaling by putting their children in it. So the tucking and the binding comments raise alarm bells for me because I, not being a parent, don't know if this is a case 
with many clothing for children or not. On the face of it though, it doesn't seem like something that should be there. But I could be wrong, and if I am, do let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you think about all the videos I've shown today. Additional comments, likes really help the channel. Try and smash it, get it up there. Thank you very much.